I'll give you a very simple practice of meditation that I do. It's absolutely critical that out of all the things that you could practice, choose something that, that resonates with your heart and soul. So the kind of meditation that we do, Brahma Kumari's Raj Yoga, we really meditate on eternal concepts. So meditation shouldn't be this like arduous, annoying thing that you have to force yourself to do. And inside, deep inside, you are a beautiful multifaceted diamond. And there's a little bit of mud around the diamond, but don't be scared of the mud. But most people, they, they have this initial success followed by some resistance. And then they think, okay, this isn't working. And I can't be dealing with this, and then they give up. I mean, this is spiritual formal. You don't, don't you have spiritual formal? What if I told you that experiencing eternity as the soul is possible? And I've experienced it numerous times, and it is life changing, and it is really, really good. This Many blessings, and welcome to the Spiritual Sense podcast. Today, we're diving into how to have richer, deeper, more nourishing meditation because you know if you're going to sit there anyway and do meditation it might as well be good meditation don't you think <laughs> so we're going to be diving into how do you go deeper what are the things that that allow you to experience these higher states of awareness and the, all those beautiful bliss chemicals and that shift in consciousness and how you can also do meditation when you are busy and what the amount of meditation should be ideally and all things related to meditation. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. And hello, Shireen. Hello, Michael. Always a pleasure being here with you. Yay. So between Shireen and I, we have roughly, what is it now, 55 years of meditation practice. And That's probably a lot. About, yeah, You're dating lot. us. We're, yeah, yeah we're, we're getting old, aren't we? Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, but of course, like when I started doing meditation, I remember my first meditation class. Um, I sat there for the first time and tried to do meditation. And I was horrified, horrified at the state of my mind. I was like, what is going on? And there's all this music playing in my head and random thoughts. And I, I was really actually quite worried about myself initially because I'd never done it before. And I wasn't quite sure what to do either. So I'm just sitting there going, ah. Uh, luckily, over the years, I have learned many, many things, and so has Shireen. And Shireen actually is a very unique soul in the sense that she has done so many practices and drills and like endless, endless different kinds of meditation, and she's really unusual that way, how many different things she's done. So we are very, very lucky to have her wonderful presence with all of her oh, you're so years lucky. of experience. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're so lucky we're so lucky you're so lucky so lucky gosh, what will you do without gosh, me <laughs> i don't know how will we manage so 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 let's just uh let's just jump into this Shreen. How, how did you get into meditation why don't you just tell us a little bit about your journey so people can get a sense of like how you started and when how you got where you are and then we'll get into some of these um deeper practices <laughs> So the way I got into meditation was even though I went looking for meditation, right? That's the initial reason I went to the center that they said it's meditation classes. But then I had such a profound experience of myself as a spiritual being and about the supreme soul, the higher power, such the ocean of love. I had such a profound experience that I actually... Uh, forgot why I went there, that <laughs> I actually went there to meditate. And so in the initial few months, maybe about a year of my meditation practice, I was totally riding on this profound experience, right? I was totally, completely immersed in that ocean of love, me as a spiritual being and the supreme as the ocean of love. And so it didn't require, so mine was a little opposite from you. It didn't require too much effort on my part the first year. After that, I really had to learn to meditate. That's very interesting. I think, you know, I had an unusual spiritual experience initially. Um, but then I had to actually sit down and go, what am I doing here exactly? And that was... Um, 
quite concerning. I think, um, but then, but then again, like this is this is how it works in life. Everyone has their own intro to these things. Sometimes it's profound. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it goes up and down. There's all these different um, valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. So if someone is wanting to deepen their meditation, whether they're new or whether they've been doing it a long time, what are some of the things that they need to know so they can go deeper? Okay, the main thing is you have to learn to concentrate. And you have to keep track. You have to keep track of the thoughts that are coming in your mind when you're meditating. Um, I'll give you a very simple practice of meditation that I do. That is, I am eternal. I am light. I am a soul. I'm light. I'm eternal. And I'm love. And it could be, the fourth one could be, I'm connected with the ocean of love, higher power, right? But the fourth one is optional. Uh, it's optional, for me it's not optional, it's optional if you don't want to to take too many steps, right? Like you want to go slow, then do the first three. I am light, I'm eternal, and I'm love. Or I'm light, I'm eternal, I'm peace. And so when I am meditating on these things, if my thoughts are wandering, then I have to pay attention. I have to write them down. So initially, you just are noticing what's going on in your mind. Initially, you're just writing down the thoughts. You're doing what's happening. You are taking stock of how much, what all of the disturbances that are happening in your mind. And so eventually, you have to go from observing your mind to directing your mind to focusing your mind. So you always take a practice and you start focusing your mind on that practice. And so if you have a set of thoughts, like I am light, I am eternal, I am love, you have a set of thoughts and then you can actually focus. So never just sit for meditation and think, oh, I'll just sit here and breathe a little deeply and do all of these things, right? Because then you will not have richer, deeper experiences. To really have rich, deep experiences, concentration is very important. Focus and concentration is very important. And to be able to focus and concentrate, you need to have a set of thoughts that you're going to focus and concentrate on. Right, absolutely. If you don't have something to focus on, then the mind obviously is just going to wander about here and there. There's, you know, there are certain meditation techniques where the whole point is to watch the thoughts and there's a certain benefit to that to some degree in some cases. But the higher level meditation is where you choose something very specifically and you right. focus on that and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into it until it goes from theory, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm focusing on these words, to a real fully, fully bodied deep experience, which is totally different from just thoughts right. in the mind. So the kind of meditation that we do, Brahma Kumari's Raj Yoga, we really meditate on eternal concepts. Eternal concepts such as I'm an eternal being, right? I'm an eternal soul. And so what happens is that experience of being an eternal soul is very deep and rich. It's very deep and rich. So let's say I'm just focusing on my thoughts and just focusing on my breath and all of that, it's very temporary. I just feel calm right now. But if you want a rich, deep experience, then you have to define what rich and deep are for you. Not just a few minutes of calm here and there, but if you really want to have an experience of yourself as an eternal being, then you would need to do something that would give you an experience of yourself as an eternal being. And so it's so important to have a few set of eternal concepts and focus on that. I would really, I really think that to have rich, deep experiences, having eternal concepts in your mind and meditating on eternal concepts is key. It is, because they're, they're transcendent experiences. And um, I was just thinking, actually, as you were talking about this, this is Shireen's book here, Soul Fitness. 
what this book actually is, because I helped Shireen with the cover and some, some ideas with this book, what this book actually is, this could easily be retitled um, Meditation, 101 Meditation Methods. Well, it actually says 50 Soul Fitness fact Practices, but it's, this is full of meditation practices, uh, eternal concepts that you can dive into. So I actually highly recommend, we'll put it in the description, I highly recommend get a co- getting a copy of this because you can pick it up and, and it's just full of things that you can focus on that will lead you into an experience. Literally, it's a whole book of practices. Um, most books are full of theory and then they might maybe find some practice at the end or there might be some like CD or like MP3 or something you listen to on the side. But this is literally a whole book full of practices. Um, so if anyone is thinking, like, what are these practices? This is definitely a great book to read. I wasn't Thank planning you, on Michael, saying that, Shereen, but it's plug. really solid. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It's, um, I haven't come across, I've read a lot of books, like I have a whole libraries and libraries of books and loads of meditation things. I have never come across a book that has so many practices in it that are, that are so deep. I have other meditation books that kind of have these basic practices. I have to put in a disclaimer here that I did not pay him to say this. No, no, no. I actually wasn't even planning it. As you were saying, I just walked over there and grabbed the book off the shelf. Um, my own signed copy from Sister Shireen herself. So, um, yeah, so, so it's very important to, to actually have practices that, that you like. Uh, this is another important point. If you want to have deep meditation, it's, it's absolutely critical that out of all the things that you could practice, like let's say you get a book like Soul Fitness, right, and you read the book, you don't want to just like say, I'm just going to start with the first one. You want to read a few different things, get a feel for it, and and choose something that, that resonates with your heart and soul. Because if you feel really good about it and inspired about it and you have some sort of connection with it, you're going to naturally <laughs> go deeper into the experience. So meditation shouldn't be this like arduous, annoying thing that you have to force yourself to do. Um, it's better if Absolutely. you have something that yeah. touches your heart. You know, it's very important. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, it touches your heart, but also right after the initial phase of touching your heart, and you start to go in, and you will notice a lot of stuff coming up, right? A lot of you know <laughs> gunk coming up, right? Yeah. And so you shouldn't be alarmed. Just remember that it is all part of the journey and inside, deep inside, you are a beautiful multifaceted diamond and there's a little bit of mud around the diamond, but don't be scared of the mud. Just keep digging deeper and you will reach the diamond. That's a very important thing to keep in mind because a lot of people they start meditation and the gunk comes up and it completely freaks them out and then they run for the hills and never do it again you know and a lot of people won't even try meditation because they have a sense intuitive sense that they're going to have to face that stuff so let, let's say someone sits down they have a you know inspiration to do it and they sit there and then their mind goes all over the place and they have memories coming up and they have weird feelings and like, like ah um <clears throat> what should they do They have to keep at it. Don't give up, right? Don't give up because the mind does play tricks on you and you have to understand that. You have to understand that every time you try to do something rich, deep, meaningful for yourself, you will always have obstacles. That's just the nature of reality. And so just understand that this is a very temporary obstacle that's here and right past this, there is a part of gold. There really is a part of gold. And you will be so much, um, you will really appreciate it so much, the fact that you stuck to it, right? You, like, don't, don't just give up on it. So you know, how, how much is a good amount of meditation? And so I would definitely at least start with half an hour in the morning and half an hour at night. So to bookend your days, right? Bookend your days 
And for that half an hour, don't give up. And if you are saying that I'm going to do this, you have to do it minimum few months, right, to really see results, like let's say three, four months. Don't give up on it. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it for half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the, at night before going to bed till you get a handle on things. So this, this is great advice because um, like anything in life, like if you want to lose weight, you want to do exercise, someone might go to the gym and they might do some stuff and then they check the scale and they say it didn't work or they might you know, eat, have juice and say oh, I don't feel any different. Um, it's most things in life that are genuinely transformative take a certain amount of time for them to kick in. Even antidepressant drugs, um, a lot of people, they might take them and they, they say they immediately feel better, but they actually take two weeks to work. So it's a placebo effect. But anything in life that's worth doing, that's a practice, especially not a drug, there's a certain threshold and until you hit that threshold, you don't get the full power of it. And also, it's good to know that the first, this is what happens, because I spend a lot of my time helping people with coaching and, and meditation, things like this. And so what happens is you, you might decide, I'm going to do meditation for a, for a month, let's say. The first three days will probably be great, because you'll be like getting into it and you'll be excited about it. Then once you start making progress, your brain, your physical brain, the neural pathways in your brain will start to have some problem with what you're doing because you're actually rebalancing neural pathways and hormones and all sorts of old habits, right? So your physical brain is going to give you a re resistance purely because we, we're used to a status quo, right? And as soon as you start disrupting it, there's going to be all this stuff comes up and the old things come up and all this stuff is going to start to come after you. Um, once you push through those next few days, then it starts gradually, gradually getting easier. It's like it's like an upward slope. And then once it starts hitting this, this certain point, normally is after about three weeks, roughly, then it then you kind of start cruising down the other side of the hill, so to speak. But most people, they... They have this initial success followed by some resistance. And then they think, okay, this isn't working and I can't be dealing with this. And then they give up. So it's really important to recognize that you're going to definitely have some level of that happening to you. Um, and, it's, and how I personally think about this is if you're getting resistance and you're getting attacked by all sorts of weird thoughts and strange feelings... Give yourself a round of applause because <laughs> it's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign of success. It's a sign of success. Um, if you don't get any resistance, it means that you're not making really any genuine change, right? Because if everything stays the same, then there's not much happens. When we really make a change, then all this weird stuff starts happening. And um, part of part of being someone who's living your own life is you have to be willing to put up with a little bit of awkwardness for a temporary period absolutely and also it's important to understand our own psychology because in social psychology there is this term called moral licensing or self-licensing where um, that if we do something positive for a few days then we give ourselves license to indulge ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Let's say I'm on a diet and I've eaten really good for four days. Then on the fifth day, I will just like totally blow the diet. You or deserve I'm a pizza, don't I, you? <laughs> right. You deserve pizza and, and ice cream. The, and, and what happens is this kind of self-licensing is really quite self-sabotaging. This moral licensing is quite self-sabotaging because what happens is with meditation, let's say you meditated, you've decided you're going to meditate every day, morning and evening for three months. If you don't stick to that dosage of morning and evening for three months, then you really will not get the benefit. So if you tell yourself on the fourth day, no, I meditated for the first three days, today I'll sleep in, I got busy or this or that, I don't need to do it. So what you're doing is you're really negating the first three days also because you have to start over again. 
And so it's really important to understand your psychology that there is something called moral licensing, that if we keep doing something positive for a few days, we tend to indulge and go back and do worse than if we weren't on a, you know, like let's say on a diet, right? I normally wouldn't eat something really horrible. But if I do this, then what happens is that I always will, um, if I'm on a, if I'm not on a diet, right? I would normally eat healthy, but I've decided I'm going to be on a diet, but then after four days, I'll eat the most unhealthiest thing I've ever eaten. And so it's really important to understand your psychology and not give in to that. Tell yourself, this will happen. As soon as I start meditating, this will happen, and I shouldn't do this, and I should continue and stick with it for three months. That's right. Start, start with 21 days to sort of make your mind feel a little bit less. Uh, um, but then do another 21 days, another 21 days. Um, just because the, you know, I know about the psychology you, you want to you start with one one day at a time but you have an intention that you're going to keep this going uh, long long term um, now now Shireen I, I can imagine someone watching this thinking hang on a minute this all sounds like a lot of hard work um, what is what is the benefit of doing this let's just come back to the benefit like why would someone want to do this because you are going to have to deal with some level of discomfort and you are going to probably have some moral licensing issues going on and all this psychology this someone might get to this point in the podcast and say, "I can't be dealing with this at all. I'm just going to watch movies and check my phone. This is too much work." <laughs> right. So, so why right. why is it worth doing this at all? You know, let's come back to that for a moment. <laughs> we all need it, right? It's not some. It's not a luxury anymore. It's not meditation is for some people who are not feeling good. It's not a luxury anymore. We really need this in our lives. And the reason why we need this in our lives is because we need meaning, we need calm, we need peace, we need, you know, a sense of self, self-respect. Um, we need all of those things. We need love for the self. We need all of those things. And so to receive all of those things, we have continually freedom. We need to experience freedom. So what we have been doing is we have been looking for these very eternal, imperishable things, like love is imperishable, peace is imperishable. We have been looking for these eternal, imperishable things and physical things and totally getting discouraged that, oh, I can't find peace here, I can't find peace going in a walk, or, oh, I thought I'll find meaning going to a retreat and I couldn't find it, is because I really need to change my life to be able to actually have sustainable peace, sustainable happiness, sustainable freedom, sustainable meaning in my life. I need that. And so if you want those things, then you have to learn to do this. There's no other way around it. I don't think it's a luxury anymore. Maybe when we started, it was luxury, but now the world is spinning out of control. You want to get a handle on what's happening in the world, and you don't want to spin out of control with the world, then we have to do this. It's true. It's, this is protection against mental illnesses in many ways, actually, in terms of like depression, anxiety, um, stress. Um, if we don't get a grip of our mind, and we let negative thinking and all this um, negative information start piling up, piling up, piling up. Um, we're susceptible to having various breakdowns, meltdowns. Um, I mean, even if we do meditation, we can still have a hard time with certain things anyway. But um, if someone who never does any meditation, they might not come out of it for, for a very long time. So um, so on one hand, this is preventative medicine, you could say, you know, like r removing mental health issues. And the other is that it provides a lot of joy and peace and <laughs> bliss. <laughs> yes, but yes. this is, you know, I always think about something. I always feel that I don't um, feel bad for what people have suffered, but I feel bad for what they're not experiencing. You know, there is an aspect of, oh, I've suffered this, I've gone through this, and this happened to me, that happened to me, fine, whatever, right? But their life 
has beautiful, rich experiences, deep experiences. Why wouldn't you want it? You know, people always talk about fear of missing out, FOMO and all of that. I, I mean, this is spiritual FOMO. You don't, don't you have spiritual FOMO? What if I told you that experiencing eternity as the soul is possible? And I've experienced it numerous times and it is life changing and it is really, really good. There's nothing, no pill can give you, no human being can give you, none of, no one can give you this, right? I'm telling you this experience exists. Why wouldn't you want to experience it? Yeah, exactly. you, you want to experience it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they just don't, um, they don't know what it is until you have it, you know. So I think, you know, for me, um, a lot of my meditation experiences, they sort of come out of the blue. Like you're doing your practices, doing your practices, and then something magical happens, like these strange and wondrous, like expanded <laughs> experiences and, and when I experience that it becomes very apparent to me that this is exactly what I've been looking for my whole life the, the states of love and bliss and um, deep peace and freedom that there's this feeling that everything else I've been doing has been a kind of a fruitless endeavor towards trying to get something that didn't work and th this is what I actually have been looking for behind all of my efforts for so long right and it's, it's it but until you've experienced Absolutely. that it just sounds like this sort of like oh it sounds interesting um yeah it, it just isn't. sounds like a bunch of words really yeah but it's um yeah when you have the experience you you the, the feeling in my heart is this is it <laughs> this this is what i've been looking for all along you know i or i like i said i always feel mm. bad for what people are not experiencing especially spiritual experiences, and we are not understanding the reward. The reward is really great. We are thinking, oh, I'm sitting here half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the day, three, three months, I don't have really time, or 21 days, I don't have really time. But really, if you understand the reward, if I told you, right, that you can walk from Orlando to Miami, and if you walk from Orlando to Miami, I will give you a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a really long distance, you would get up and walk, right? If you have faith that that soul will, that person will give you the million dollars, you'll get up and do it. Even though it's a lot of effort, you'll do it, because you understand what a million dollars, what million dollars are. But if you, so, you have to understand that you have to have this leap of faith mm -hmm. that there are these beautiful states of consciousness like freedom is a spiritual state of consciousness and it exists love right altruistic love generous love pure love it exists so you have to peace this deep 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 silent sweet peace that it exists so when we have all of these experiences and we know that they exist and we know that if we can, we are able to receive them through meditation. Then we should do them so that we can experience them. Yeah, it's a sign of mercy and love for ourselves, isn't it? Get to give ourselves what we actually right. want. Right. So, so, so understand that there is a reward, right? There is a reward much bigger than what you thought was possible. Exactly. Most of what we want. I mean, you might want to even take time to write down. When we do all these things, like we might um, work really hard, or we might do something, buy something, get something, and we, we get that thing because we think it's going to make our life better, and it's going to make our life better because it makes us hopefully feel better. So almost everything we do, we're doing it because hopefully at the end, we will feel better, right? I mean, that's kind of a like a deeper reason behind nearly all actions. And meditation is... Uh, <laughs> is the best way to just get straight to that state and it it requires a certain amount of threshold what i personally find is that when i when i sit for meditation um, i'm i can get into these wonderful states fairly easily nowadays compared to what, when i started out but what i notice is the more i concentrate the deeper i go there's like levels and it goes from like this initial so sort of what you could call a struggle of the mind and just getting into it to this 
change in feeling state and then it can go deeper and deeper or higher and higher and um and these high these really remarkable meditation states seem to come about when when we just push it a little bit longer than normal this my my experience absolutely so Absolutely. sometimes we think, oh, you know, what I, I've got to get back to work and whatever else. And but if you stay with it a little bit longer, it can it can just reach this amazing space. And and then oftentimes because of that new clarity and that shift in consciousness, we can look back at our life and go, oh, I could solve this problem that I have. We'll do this thing in ten times less time, and I don't even need to do half the stuff I thought I had to do. And we get ideas about how to manage our life better from that space. So it, it oftentimes saves us <laughs> a lot of work, actually. <laughs> right, you know. right. You know, I always also think, I mean, for initial beginners, half an hour, half an hour in the morning, half an hour at night is good. Mm -hmm. But to really have a good experience, you need about an hour, mm -hmm. right? And hour, two hours, I feel that we to spend so much time getting a dopamine hit, scrolling shorts and looking at this and looking at that, Instagram and TikTok and all of these all of these things, YouTube. So what we can do is really prioritize this and understand that the dosage, the dosage of how long you do, how much you do is very important for the efficacy of meditation, right? Like just like any drug. Like, let's say I have, I have an infection and the doctor told me you need this antibiotic for 10 days, morning and evening. And I take it in the morning one day, I don't take it in the evening the same day, I take it in the evening next day, I don't take it in the morning, the third day I skip. It might work, it might not work, right? Because the efficacy of the med medicine depends on the dosage of the medicine. And so in the same way, meditation really depends on the dosage. To really get the most out of it, how much you take, how long you take is very important. So definitely one, two hours, if you can manage to really learn to meditate, you know, just sit down and meditate for one, two hours. But if you want to meditate for longer, right? If you want, let's say, meditate for four hours, six hours, eight hours, then you have to learn to meditate while walking and moving around. While doing other work, you have to learn to meditate because that's also possible. Because I meditate all the time when I'm driving mm -hmm. and talking to people, you know, take, going for a walk, you know, going to the gym. I meditate all the time. So that is possible. So to sit down meditation, I would do for one, two hours, but if you want to increase your meditation further, then definitely learn to do while you're walking and talking and interacting and doing work. All right. Walking and driving is easy. Um, working on the computer and talking to people is a lot harder or possibly impossible, especially working on the computer. But. Um, but definitely there's a lot of lot of things when we're not when we're not focused on something we can easily do meditation like cleaning the dishes walking around the house talking to people is still possible as well but um depending on how much you're paying attention to them you might be a little bit uh, but what i did uh, to be able to do this mm -hmm. i wrote down when i started doing this, this is about 15 20 years ago i wrote down about eight tasks that i can do while meditating during the day. Nice. It could be um, like drinking water, eating, uh, cleaning, taking a shower, um, driving, all of these tasks, right? Mm -hmm. I, going up and down stairs, because when I did this, I was living in, an apart, in a house that had stairs. And so um, going up and down stairs and all of that. So, and every day in the evening, I used to see, check, and see, did I do, did I meditate while doing this task? And so let's say I decided, the stairs bit I remember very well. I would tell myself, okay, going up and down stairs, I'm going to meditate. And I've come halfway down the stairs, or halfway up the stairs, and I realized I did not meditate. I would go back down <laughs> and sit in med, like really stabilize myself in a practice, 
and then start walking up. Because I gave consequences for not doing what I said I would do. And eventually this practice of learning to, I learned to meditate while doing things. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very high level practice. Once you do meditation a little bit and you get a sense of how it works, then you can in, incorporate that into your daily it practice. It is a high level practice, right? Yeah. D- don't worry about it. If you're just starting out, mm-hmm. just do a half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. Yeah, and now let's also talk about this thing here. This is a, uh, if you can see this, this is a uh, timer. This is actually probably a kitchen timer of some kind. And... Um, you can set the timer for one minute or two minutes or 10 seconds or you know five minutes or whatever an hour and this is a micro meditation practice do you want to talk about that shereen how do you do a micro meditation so timer right <clears throat> even like the phone like you know any phone right even this phone has a timer and so um if you don't have a timer like i prefer an analog timer uh, but or you know a timer that's not my phone even if it's digital i prefer that but if you don't have don't worry about it don't need to go buy don't need to think oh i have to buy a timer and then i will do it don't think about all of that just set your timer for one minute two minutes however long and have a practice in place and just learn to reflect and meditate on that practice right just just start doing it and you can do this half a, a half a minute, 30 seconds, one minute. And it could be, I, can, I will do this one minute on the hour, which we call traffic control. So you could do any of these things, even for a little bit of time, because it makes a difference. Because the one thing I've learned about meditation is you cannot postpone it. You cannot say that I'm going to meditate tomorrow morning for two hours. Because the way the mind hears it is, I'm going to meditate for two hours, two months from now. Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow morning or two months from now is the same for the mind. The mind doesn't know the difference. So if you really want to learn to meditate, it has to be now. Now, now, now. And the timer and doing micro meditations now, very effective then you don't have to wait for any anything. You don't have to wait for the right chair, the right light, the right you know, room, the right traffic, the right whatever, whatever, right? Even in traffic, you can do this. You're waiting at a stoplight, you can meditate for 30 seconds. It's true. And it's, um, it's actually in many ways more powerful because when we focus on something with absolute concentration for one minute, we can go really, really deep. One, one of the things I did many years ago <clears throat> when I was in India for five months is I would sit on the floor with this um, picture of this light, like it represents God, divine light, and I would set my timer. It was it was like one of, like one of these, and um, for one minute, and I would say, let me see if I can just focus on being in this light and being aware that I'm a spiritual being for one minute. So I'd press the button, and it would count down, and then it would beep once it once it reached zero. And um, <clears throat> what I noticed is that initially the mind would be wandering all over the place, and it would beep really quickly. I'm like, oh wow, a whole minute went past, and a whole minute went past. So I did this again and again and again. And then I started noticing that I got I went into this wonderful state, and I thought there must be something wrong with the timer, because um, there's no way this is a minute I must have like pressed the wrong button or it must have been like 10 minutes or something and I looked at it and it was still counting down and it was actually a minute but during that time it's dropping down 59 58 somewhere as it started going down I kind of entered into this this altered reality beyond time so from my personal perspective I was in this timeless place beyond so even one second you kind of go inside of it and it expands into this eternal awareness and one second seemed to stretch out for a very 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 long yeah. time and time then, is elastic no and then it yeah. then it would be I was time. like yeah I was like what has happened it's really fascinating to experience that because 
you you start to realize that like inside the seconds if you go deep into this you kind of enter into this um <laughs> this beautiful thing and it starts with one minute one minute one minute one minute not even two minutes just one minute one minute ten times i think is better than ten minutes one time because you're focused so try it out kairos time right kairos time because time becomes very elastic sometimes when you're meditating and you realize you're actually the soul is beyond time. You, the soul, the self is beyond time and beyond space. And it can fast forward, it can increase, it can go into slow motion, it can do all of those things. Because you, the soul, are perceiving time. And in meditation, you perceive time differently. Yeah, you could go beyond time in a way. When, when you say kairos, I'm sure a lot of people don't know what that means. Do you want to explain what that means, kairos time? That in, in the Greeks had um, two kinds of time, right? Kronos is the chronos time, like the time we generally say as time. That is, you know, five minutes is you look and how many seconds and five minutes and how many minutes. And so that's five minutes. And that is chronos time. But kairos time is a qualitative time where it is slow, it is rich, it's meaningful, it's, um, you know, it's full of experiences. And so when you are meditating or even when you are really with people, you... Um, enjoy speaking to, being with, you know, you don't realize time because you're in Kairos time at that point. And especially in meditation, right, you really start experiencing Kairos time because it's a qualitative aspect of time. It's not a quantitative, quantitative aspect of time. Yeah, you, you lose track of time. You're beyond, beyond time. So I, sometimes like one minute can seem like an hour. And sometimes a couple hours can seem like a few minutes. It's um, it's very fast. I mean, when I do meditation in the hot tub, overlooking with the mountains, I think I'm just sitting there for half an hour and I come in the house and look at the clock and I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> I've had to actually buy a clock recently so I can see what the time is when I'm outside. Otherwise, like I don't have any idea what's going on. And Because um, I get into this wonderful state of meditation that uh it just just like it's just another world so um and th that's what you want in meditation you want to not know what's going on um beyond everything so you're really entering into a a state of rich experience that is beyond all of the endless um details of life and then that energy comes back with you when you start getting back in the game and getting stuff done afterwards. <laughs> you know, one thing though I want to talk about here, if we can segue into this, is uh, procrastination. And we have to understand that we as humans, especially at this time, we procrastinate a lot. And we are very influenced by the zeitgeist, right? like the overall psychology that is going on in the world. And we get very influenced. We are not in islands. We are not independent as we think we are, or we are not as individualistic as we think we are. We tend to get very affected by things around us, people we hang out with, the movies we see, you know, the content we can consume on social media. We really, uh, get very affected by it, and especially like the overarching general mindset that is going on, we get very influenced by it. And so one of the influences we have is procrastination. It's just like as a society, we've learned to procrastinate a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you need to understand the psychology of procrastination, because if you don't understand the psychology of procrastination, then a lot of times procrastination can be a hurdle in our to deepen and rich in our practice to make our practice rich and deep it can be a hurdle so you have to understand the psychology of procrastination and so we are all procrastinating right but if you shine a light on procrastination itself then you can get rid of it 
if you don't shine a light, if it's unconscious pattern, then you can't get rid of it. So what do you, what do you mean by that? Um, okay, the first thing is that procrastination is inefficient. The reason why we procrastinate, the first reason why we procrastinate is we think it will take longer than it does. So let's say I want to clean my desk, right? And I think, I don't have time to clean my desk now. I'm just going to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can't find things. I can't, you know, I don't know where things went. It's a total mess. And I'm spending like 10 minutes looking for things, right? Mm. Then the next day comes by and I go, clean your desk. No, 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 I don't have time to clean my desk because I, you know, whatever. And then I'll spend another 10 minutes, right? So not cleaning my desk has costed me 10, 20 minutes. But if I just sit down and clean my desk, it will be five minutes. It really will not take me more than five minutes. So the procrastination is inefficient because it took me 15 minutes. It took me four times longer to procrastinate. If I just sat down and cl cl cleaned my desk, then it would have just been five minutes. And so procrastination is very inefficient that way, right? Because it it's, feels like it's going to take a long time, but procrastination actually it takes a much longer than the task itself. Mm -hmm. That's one psychology we need to understand. The second psychology is we think it's harder. Oh, meditation is so hard. I can't do it. I don't know what to do. All of those things, right? We think it's hard, so we'll keep postponing it. And also the postponement happens in a very um, in a tricky way. Oh, after I get my chair, I will meditate. After I get the <laughs> room set up properly, I will meditate. Once so all candle, of this will happen. My special and then candle I, in the post. This, this or, my special candle, my special yeah, chair. Yeah. Then I will meditate, right? So what I'm doing at that time is that um, I am... Uh, telling myself, the psychology there is I'm telling myself it's harder than it is. So that is where the micro practice comes in. Keep doing a lot of micro practices during the day. So when you actually sit down for meditation, then it's not as hard. Then you're not having this procrastination going on around, the, around how hard things are. So I imagine and people are going to be wondering what what exactly would a micro practice look like because um, we're talking we in general. We started with a micro practice, right? Yeah, we're talking in general terms. Like uh, we have a whole course on meditation, and we have guided meditation. Just for anyone like wondering, like how I want to do meditation, what exactly do you mean specifically? So we have guided meditations. We have a course on meditation. It's all free. You can download it in the description. Uh, Shireen's book is great for lots of micro practices. So, so I just want to just mention this because I imagine people are thinking, well, what to do exactly? But why don't you share something, uh, just one idea now so they can, can use it? The one we started with is a good one. Mm -hmm. I am light. I am eternal. I am love. And you can have variations of it. I'm light. I'm weightless. I'm eternal. Mm. Uh, I am light, I am love, I am peace, right? It can be any of these things. And I always bring the Supreme God into my meditations. The ocean of love is with me, the ocean, I belong to the ocean of love, mm. like that, right? These are all micro practices. So if you sit down, let's take this one as an example. I am light, I am eternal, I am peace that to just sit down and really become into that awareness, to come into that awareness is less than 30 seconds. Mm. So that is a micro practice. And it adds up, it adds up. You know, I've read somewhere um, in Oprah magazine, I think one time, mm -hmm. that Oprah was interviewing all these people, uh, no, it was on TV actually. So I was watching this episode on oh, when Oprah had her show. And all these people who became millionaires by just accumulating change, like mm. change here and there, they just started accumulating and then, you know, they, the money multiplied from that, right? 
So let's say if you see 10 cents somewhere, you might not give it too much value, but it adds up. So it's the same with micro practice. Just make every moment count. And this micro practice, they, they start adding up. Mm. It's true. I think this is one of the secrets is that it doesn't seem like anything's happening initially. Like if you save a little bit, invest a little bit, just these little things, you think, well, this isn't making any difference. But they do compound, compound interest in a way, a spiritual compound interest. It has profound effect because um, the trajectory of our life is changing. And that, that once you change the direction, once you start doing meditation just a little bit, your direction of life is improved and then gradually you go in a new path and over time <laughs> you end up in a different world just because of those tiny little things that you just did again and again and again for a few seconds. Right, right. You know, one of the things, you know, I want to go back to the psychology of procrastination, right? Is um, the way to combat this the way to combat procrastination is just do it. Just do it. And so don't postpone anything, right? Like let's say you're thinking, I'm going to start meditating tomorrow. <laughs> For the mind, there's no tomorrow. There's just right now, right? You have to understand that. For the mind, there is no tomorrow. There's just this moment. And so um, you start, you do with a micro practice of I'm light, I'm weightless, I'm love, right? You start with that micro practice and next time procrastination comes, don't overthink it. Just do the micro practice. D don't overthink, don't say, oh, I really want to get up, I don't want to get up, I'm not able to get up. Don't think all of that. Just start doing the practice and you will get up and you will overcome that procrastination. And, and that's really good advice and also to give yourself credit for the practice, not for the result. This is a very deep Absolutely. psychology. This is very, very important psychology. If we judge ourselves on the outcome, we are not thinking correctly about this whole thing. This is the same with anything. Like for example, let's say I'm learning to play the piano. If I judge myself on whether or not I can play the perfect piece, let's say I'm learning some classical music. If I think, did I play it perfectly? then I am not going to be able to end up playing it perfectly because in order to play perfect music, I have to practice imperfectly and make mistakes and learn things and try stuff out. And the result of practice with enough practice, with enough um, skill and enough mistakes is that I'll play a perfect song. But if I judge myself on whether or not I can, can play a perfect song at the beginning, I will immediately feel defeated and then I will feel deflated and I'll give up. And same thing with meditation. If you think, oh, I didn't experience complete bliss, I wasn't like just totally blissed out, totally blissed out, then that means I'm a terrible person and it's not good for me and I'm no good at it. That's really dangerous thinking. You should So instead of that, you think, how can I do the practice imperfectly, use my timer if you, if you want to use a timer, and... At the end of it, you give yourself a round of applause, right? And and you can even make a note of it if you like and say, yeah, I did it. And gradually it will add up and then you will have experiences. Um, you don't want to have licensing. So I did meditation for five minutes. Now I'm going to have um, sort of 15 slices of massive cake and, and I'm just going to like watch TV for five hours because then, <laughs> then uh, that's probably going to have a problem if you do that but um right. but you can have like little little things it's actually all right to to give yourself little um rewards that are healthy i don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as it doesn't harm you so um right you know, you know uh, michael i do want to double click on what you're saying yeah about um like Focus on the practice, not on the result, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel it's unreasonable and ridiculous people having expectation of meditation or spiritual things. Very ridiculous, really unreasonable, right? Let's say you are 100 pounds overweight 
You can't go to the gym and tell the trainer, hey, by tomorrow I need to lose 100 pounds. Like, like, that's like the most ridiculous thing ever. You're not going to lose 100 pounds by tomorrow. And so we have a lot of mud around the diamond, right? I don't mean to be a bearer of bad tidings, but don't worry about the mud. All I'm saying is that don't have unreasonable expectations. Just like you're going to the gym and you're working out and you're thinking that eventually this is all going to pay off, that's how you have to approach meditation. You can't have unreasonable expectations out of meditation. You should have the same you know, think, think that you are 100 pounds of mud is on the soul, and that mud will go away eventually. I don't want you to get discouraged. The mud will go away eventually, but it's not going to happen overnight. And the most important thing to focus on is the practice. Don't worry about the experience, just the practice. When we don't have expectations out of the practice, that is when the experience comes. Yeah, this is absolutely critical. So you sit down and say, I'm not trying to experience blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to do the practice from my heart to the best of my ability, even if it's not perfect. And then you will end up having wonderful experiences as a result of the practice, as long as it's a good practice, of course. Um, but, but having expectations about the outcome actually wrecks our enjoyment of the practice and it blocks it from happening, funnily enough. So it's better to think I'm going to sit down and practice rather than I'm going to... I want, and I want bliss now, bliss, 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 bliss. Oh, I didn't feel bliss, okay, it doesn't work, okay, I'm giving up. You know, back to Facebook, you know, whatever, you know, back to the phone. <laughs> it's not going to work that way. So... Practice, 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 little by little by little. It's really useful to get one of these timers, actually, if you can, or at least use your phone. There's an app here on... Um, I have loads of meditations on Insight Timer app, but an Insight Timer is actually an app originally for meditation timers, and they have a really nice... They have loads of guided meditations on there and lots of courses and stuff, but they have an app that you can say, for example, I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes and I'm going to have these bells go off every three minutes to just kind of bring the focus back. And you can say, or you can decide exactly how long the intervals are and what bells you have and gongs. And so it's actually a really, really good meditation app, Insight Timer. It's meant for this very purpose. So you might want to get that um, for, it's free. Just I'm just helping you out here. Uh, this is good as well, but of course you have to carry this around and you might not have it with you. But nearly everyone is walking around with one of these. So you can use Insight Timer for that. And you can also listen to meditations on Insight Timer as well. I'm not being paid by Insight Timer. I'm just trying to help you out, by the way. So anyway, Shireen, final thoughts? Final thoughts? Don't give up. Don't mm. give up. Be nice to yourself. You know, just like you want to go and have beautiful experiences. You know, people say, this is on my bucket list. I want to do this and that. Put this on your bucket list mm -hmm. to have beautiful, meaningful, rich, deep experiences. Ah, and it all starts with one second, one minute of conscious practice. So in case anyone doesn't know, we actually have a whole meditation course, a free course that you can download and listen to. It's very deep. It's called the Ancient Spiritual Secrets course. It's a very, very profound, powerful training that teaches you lots of different meditation methods. It has guided meditations in there for you to listen to so you can go into the experience um, we also have a lot of free meditations. It's all free. There's free meditations, free courses, um, and all of that is available um, in the description. You can just click on it, um, opt in for it, and you get access to the training. And you can do it at your own pace whenever you like. So I just wanted to make sure you know that you can get that. All right, so we have a blessing. We have a blessing. Do you want to pick a number or should I pick a random page? Let's do um, 73. 73. Peace. Ah. 
You find solace in the calm flow of loving thoughts that course through your being. In peace, you've learned to listen to the voice of your wisdom. Your heart is tranquil and you're in harmony with yourself and all around you. Yay. So meditation leads to that wonderful peace. Enjoy, enjoy. Hopefully you learned something interesting that you didn't know about and you can put it into practice in your life. And again, thank you, Shireen, for your lovely presence. And also, um, let's, uh, I'm just going to plug thank your book you, again. Thank you, Michael, plugging for your, your presence. Book. And thank you, every... Plugging your book. There we are. Get the book. Um, Soul Fitness. I think a better title for this would have been um, Magical Meditation Practices. But what it leads to is Soul Fitness. So it is, it's still a good title. Um, if you're If you are interested in... Um, exactly what practices to do. Shireen has literally outlined very, very specific, easy to do step by step practices. So you can just pick it up and go, all right. Um, we should actually do a session on you using this book and explaining how it works to people because um, this is a very good book. So uh, we'll put a link to the description. I do want to tell all of you that Michael tried to make me change the title so many times. I did try. She wasn't having it. But the thing is, it would have been hard because she mentions soul fitness throughout the whole book. So I'm just like, you know. Um, but it's it, it will lead to your soul being more fit. So that it is a it is true. It's what it's called. But what it, what it, what is the book made of? What is actually in the book is probably what about eighty-five meditation practices that are very, very powerful. So, thank yeah. you, Michael, for that very sweet plug for my book. It's a great book. <laughs> really appreciate it, and also all of you staying with us till the end of the podcast. This is very much appreciated. Yay. So thank you for your lovely presence and lots of love. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Yay.